Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. This is Faith Under Fire. Each Thursday on Family Life, we give voice to religious battlegrounds in this nation. I'm your host, Tracy Lynn. With us today, Owen Strand, professor at Grace Bible Theological Seminary. So, Owen, the word woke has grown in usage over the past several years, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement. How do you define wokeness? I define it per the Cambridge English Dictionary as the state of being awake to systemic racism and systemic injustice in America. When you go woke, you not only see the American order as shot through with and infected by racism at every level, but you effectively resolve to become an activist against the America you now understand to be so corrupt. Wow. In my research to better understand wokeness myself, I looked up some things. Stay woke became the watchword of Black Lives Matter activists on the streets following the police killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri back in 2014, urging people to keep watch for brutality and unfair police tactics. I also looked at an article from Asia Romano pointing to research and 19 19- 1923 writings by a Jamaican philosopher citing wake up Ethiopia, wake up Africa as a call to global black citizens to become more socially and politically conscious. And then I even found a 1938 song protesting the 1931 incident where nine African-American boys were discovered on a train in Scottsboro, Alabama, with two white women who later claimed sexual assault. Eight of the nine teens who became known as the Scottsboro Boys were convicted and sentenced to death despite evidence. Five were finally paroled in 1937, with three others by 1944. The musician known as Lead Belly mentioned that he met an attorney defending the young boys and says at the very end of an interview, best stay woke, keep their eyes open, basically for any black people going into Alabama at the time. He was kind of giving that warning. And uh, he showed me the Scots before and I shake hands with him, so I made this little song about down there. So I advise everybody to be a little careful when they go along through that, but stay woke, keep their eyes open. One more time. Stay woke, keep their eyes open. So roll forward 75 years. How would you say your definition is different from the cultural definition of wokeness right now? I think the definitions are basically the same or very similar, at least. But I read the definition I just gave you being awake to systemic racism as being basically a bankrupt reality. So what is said to be the reality on the ground that there is systemic racism in America and in the church. As I show in my book, Christianity and Wokeness, it's possible there could be systemic racism, but it's not at all a necessary conclusion. And that language is derived from Marxist categories and driven by neo-Marxists today. So I don't buy the claim at all where woke people would say, oh, no, 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 that's absolutely the on the ground reality in America today. And when you look at police shootings and when you look at household net worth between blacks and whites, so called, these kind of metrics, you're seeing racism talking. So there's a major debate over how to read data, over whether the data shows this at all. But I don't think America is today systemically racist or unequal in the ways that wokeness does. Thank you, Owen. And one more question. What's a practical first step, maybe for someone listening who has been hurt, and maybe they have been oppressed by people because of the color of their skin in the past? What's something practical for them today if they know Jesus? Something practical is to know that you are not what has happened to you. We all have to claim this, whether we're talking about so-called race or identity or whatever it may be. We are not victims fundamentally. We are criminals with Adam in his real historical fall in Genesis 3. But the good news for us is that though we have fallen in Adam and though we are all sinners, our past does not define us. We are remade and born again and made new through the grace of God when we trust in Christ as Savior and we repent of our sin. We are literally made new, and we are no longer doomed to live in the past. Now we face life with a hopeful perspective for the future. 
That's Grace Bible Theological Seminary Professor Owen Strand. I'm Tracy Lynn, Family Life News.